Trump has COVID-19. Trump has COVID. Trump has COVID-19. Trump has COVID. What's going on, everybody in the ether and the future? This is the Bituation Room Podcast Live. I am your host, Francesca Fiorentini. A little late, but you could wait. Although you never know. You never, maybe you can't wait. Maybe something happened in the six minutes that I waited. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Brian on Facebook, Todd Roy on YouTube, uh, Alyssa Burdick on YouTube, Tiger Lily 48 on YouTube. What's going on? Welcome to this week. Uh, wow. Um, so, the pathogen got a pathogen. Wow. That just, just didn't we all hope and pray for this very fucking moment? Mm, it feels good. It feels good. I'm still drinking water. Because you can't celebrate, can't celebrate, can't let your guard down, can't get too excited, can't get too excited. Um, we have such a good show for you tonight. Liz Winstead, co-creator of The Daily Show and the founder of Abortion Access Front is here. We're digging into the Supreme Court justice nominee and, of course, talking about what this red wedding means for the Republican Party. Also, comedian Atsuko Okatsuka. So funny, so lovely. I cannot wait. Um... But first, I just want to let everybody know to give this podcast five stars on iTunes. If you're listening in the future, if you're listening right now, just open up your little little app. I think the iTunes app podcasts on uh, Apple, five stars. We need those. They help people discover us. Subscribe to this channel right now, slash Franny Fio on YouTube. Ring the little bell so you know when we're going live, so you're never late like I was. Um, And also... Tip the show. Tip this show. This show is free, as all content is these days, um, except for Quibi. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, and that's why we need tips. And so many people have been so generous with tips. We donate a portion of those tips every single week to a different organization. But because we are 30 days away from the election, 30 days away from kicking fascism to the curb, uh, or trying to, and then taking to the streets, and then sort of a you know a whole long drawn out process, and then maybe we lose, maybe we win, but who knows? But like the future is unwritten. That is going to happen. But we need to make sure that we defeat this POS in the White House, and we're going to support Seed the Vote. Seed the Vote is doing incredible phone banking, door knocking, and they're raising funds to send people to Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Seed the Vote. So if you tip us, we will donate a portion of that to Seed the Vote. TBR dash live on Venmo, TBR live on Cash App. And I just want to shout out the people who've given incredibly generously these past few weeks. Um, the people who've given more than 20 bucks, not the 20 bucks or below, is not also super appreciated. But the special shout outs, the real special shout outs go to Frederick Brighton, Bob Mason, Ryan Glanville, Gautam Jayanthi, Jayanthi. Uh, Daniel Lee and Katrina Bleckley. You guys are the best. You're so, so sweet. You're so generous. Times are tough and you found a way to, uh, to just make me feel special, make Becca, my producer, feel special, make this show feel special, and also support a bunch of awesome organizations um, like Seed the Vote who are just working every night and day for November. Um, I think that's it. I think we're ready to jump into this bitch. All right. We're ready to jump in. I'm going to bring up our guest. She is a stand-up comedian, writer, performer, who's been featured by Vulture and Time Out at the Top Comedian to follow in L.A. She starred in her own one-hour special as part of the Hulu series Comedy Invasion, uh, capital A on Asian. She has written on Adult Swim, Soft Focus with Jenna Friedman. The Eric Andre Show is the creator of Let's Go Atsuko, a woke Japanese game show. And her debut album, But I Control Me, is out now. Please welcome Atsuko Okatsuka. Hi. Hi, Francesca. Thanks for having Hi, me. Let's go. Hi, Atsuko. Thank you for being here. Oh my Dude, God. we got it. We got, a lot of people are watching for the, for you, for this, for this moment. For this moment? That that long bio, I am so sorry. I don't know where you got that. That must have been from, from my website. <laughs> Dude, I'm just sad it doesn't include the fact that you also teach dance and specifically the art of twerking. Um, and <laughs> I... 
One of my, anyway, we can talk more about this. One of my favorite get out the vote campaigns is get your booty to the poll. And I definitely think that Atsuko as one of the best twerkers I've ever seen. Uh, I need your version of getting your booty to the poll. You know, not that you want to co-opt that, you know, but that, I think there's right. enough booty to go around. That's very nice. I'll I'll think about it. But right now I've been enjoying <laughs> what's been out there with the the poll ones because yeah. Yeah, I don't so want I was good. like, that's not my people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's Atlanta uh what, exotic dancers, so good. Such a good mm -hmm. campaign. Yes. I didn't even get the to the poll until like yesterday. I was like, oh the Voting poll. <laughs> I was like, I was so focused on the thongs and the butts. Got right. Lost. That's how you, lost. they get you. That's how they, it's really smart. Actually. Before you know, you're voting. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm going to bring in our next guest. She is also a comedian. So excited. Uh, writer and co-creator of The Daily Show, founder of Abortion Access Force, an organization dedicated to increasing awareness around legislative attempts at blocking women's reproductive freedoms, and may I add, in the most badass and confrontational and beautiful and creative way. Um, she also has a comedy special she just filmed under quarantine, and it is called Corona Borealis. Please welcome Liz Winstead, everybody. Hello! I am not in a tank top. <laughs> this is hilarious. Y'all are looking amazing. Um, and I am in Minnesota Climate change. bundled up for, uh, God knows what happens here. Uh, you just like, I, oh my God, I don't know about you, Atsuko, but like, I can't wait to be in a chunky sweater again. I am, it's been hot forever in Los it's, Angeles, <laughs> forever. Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> yeah. been hot. It's been hard to breathe outside. Yeah. You got to rake it on fire. Up. You're rake <laughs> for it. Get it going. <laughs> We got to got to get the break out the rake break out the rake um god damn it you guys let's just open the show as we do every bituation room uh, and I invite everyone watching to do the same which is just a little simple game of not even a game just a check in what are you bitching about now what are you bitching about liz what's what's got under your collar other than everything uh other than the stuff we're going to talk about tonight some side bitch you want me side, to side bitch. <laughs> you know, the thing that I'm bitching about the most is um, I came, I, I am born and raised in Minneapolis and I came back here to quarantine. Um, and I think the thing that I'm bitching about the most while I'm here, it, as we are moving towards the trial of the cops who murdered George Floyd, um, this constant drumbeat of people who, when they talk about cops, they say, um, you know, it's just one bad apple. It's the just the one bad apple. And I was like, and I'm always like, first of all, if you're trying to defend racial injustice with an Osmond Brothers lyrics, it's a mess. Second of all, <laughs> it's not true. It's actually one bad apple does spoil the entire bunch. It, like if you have a bad apple in a bunch of apples, it taints all the apples. Like you have to throw them all out. And so when you look at the police department and they have a bad apple, um, they don't even deny the apple's bad. In fact, they will try to pass it off as good and then yep. say that it was just following protocol. So that's the thing I've been bitching about the most lately, just the bad apple. It's just like, no, nope. And like, nope. maybe we could spin it and like, look, we don't have to like, they're just not good apples anymore, but maybe we could make them into like an apple sauce or an apple pie, but you've got to fundamentally remake the shape and form of this apple bushel, i.e. defund and change the police department from the ground up. Well, like, I mean, there's a way like we can maybe spin it. Well, I mean, it's just like, whenever they say laughter is the best medicine, I always use that analogy for defund the police. I'm like, you know, it really isn't like you really wouldn't call a comedian if you needed like heart surgery <laughs> and call a doctor. So it's the same thing with defund the police. You just maybe don't call a person with a gun to exacerbate the situation and has no training in helping somebody with a mental health crisis. So I don't know, some things seem really easy to me, but yet are made complicated by people who just want to complicate them. Hmm. Absolutely. That's, it's also the first time. So I had not, I'm very late to adulting. I'm very late bloomer. I did not know that a bad apple in, this is literal apples, in a bunch of apples will ruin the other ones. Yeah. Uh, but explains why I got sick a lot 
just <laughs> eating the other apples that didn't seem bad, you know? And then uh, there I was getting sick. You needed to know me so much early on in your life. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good, you know, a metaphor. But yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. And then it, it one bad apple, bad group of apples, people get sick, they die. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm definitely though, like the cut around the rotten parts kind of person, like throw mm. out a few of the rotten strawberries and eat the other ones that you're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Right. Cheese and bread, I'm that way too. Cheese and bread, yeah. Navigate out anything that's green. Right, that's, that's okay, basically, right? Basically, <laughs> not I'm when it comes to the police. Right? No, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. But okay, yeah. sound off in the comments. Can you eat other apples in a bushel if there's a bad apple in there? I think that I think that you will just see the taint spread to the other apples fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I just you know look at the apple, but it is it's it's pretty fast. It spreads. It spreads. Yeah, get, rid uh, of, get rid of that funky apple. That's good. I'm ready. Get that rid now. of that funky apple. Okay, sorry. Apple Everything's facts. a song today. You know you're going to get apple facts 10 minutes into the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The new segment, Apple Facts. I'm throwing you know out all my facts today. <laughs> aren't ahead, actually made of apples. Um, Asuka, what that. are you bitching about? <laughs> I've been trying not to bitch. And then I was like, well, I'm coming. You know, I'm going to talk to you all. I'm coming onto the bitchuation room. I need to find something to bitch about because I was bitching about everything. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta be positive. And then, you know what? It I think it's maybe Republicans who now we have to be like stoked if they change their mind, maybe <laughs> not, mm. not so much bitching about it. I'm just kind of like annoyed. I'm like, okay, it, fine. Like, you know, Lincoln project, I guess that was a good tweet. You know, like I have to, right. you know, now be like, Oh yeah, welcome. <laughs> you know, welcome to the resistance. Here is your bag. Here is your sticker. Don't fuck yeah. it up. Yeah, no, it, it's. You know, I had the privilege of speaking to Anthony Scaramucci on a podcast that wasn't mine, um, called Irrational Fear, and it was really good. But it was very much one of those like, well, how much can I push back here? Because if I could, I could just talk at him forever and and you know argue with him because he's part of the Lincoln Project now, mm -hmm. but. Because he was, anyway, the point is, is a lot of the former Trump staffers utilize their ability to get booked on shows that they can then kind of like run roughshod over so that they can talk and be like, well, I gave you an interview, but you can't really push back on them. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, it was oh. a big get. It was cool. It was good. But yeah. it was like, the, the deal here is I'm doing you a favor. And it's like, bitch, no, you're not. Fuck that. That's bullshit. Yeah. In fact, I you're have, years I, late. <laughs> I uh, I did a thing with them, and it's like Lincoln Project. Yep, and I was making fun of John Kasich at the convention. I was like, you know, and they were like, "Oh, lay off John Kasich," and I was like, "I lay off no one." And the world, <laughs> and, and and it just set it off for me that you think a world that John Kasich and his ilk and that. Uh, that type of politics is the world you want to go to. So right. people need to be super clear that you shouldn't get stars or points or whatever you're offering up for understanding and speaking out against the moral bankruptcy that is Donald Trump. The, the Lincoln Project folks are still Republicans. They still yep. want lower taxes. John Kasich, their buddy, when he was the governor of Ohio, passed a law that if you were raped and pregnant and you went to rape counseling, they couldn't give you abortion as an option, the counselor. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. snuck in anti-abortion legislation in the dead of night. Let's talk about all the ways that he, you know, def defunded agriculture. You know, like, yeah, he expanded Medicare, Medicaid reform. Great. Right. That's great. And then didn't, didn't the DNC roll him out also this year? I can't remember. It was this year. Yeah, that yeah? was this year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and this is the DNC was like a republic. It was like, right. Felt like, you know, when you were little and your mom would make you invite to your birthday party, 
some asshole kid who was the worst because they had terrible parents. That's what it felt like. Like, why are these Republicans here? There's more Republicans than brown people. Right, like right. Progressives. Like, what's Absolutely. happening? This is, this is why I think, like, and we'll get into this, why I think, um, you know, pro-choice work, reproductive rights work is far more radical than where a lot of people think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's far more um, kind of, I think it's far more to the left. And I, and I think on both sides from liberals and from, you know, the left and progressives need to understand just how radical uh, and transformative of an issue reproductive rights truly is. Uh, it's not a middling kind of, I mean, it should be a run of the mill discussion, but it, it, to get there, we need more transformation. Anyway, Liz, we'll talk all about that. But um, I, I'm bitching about something real specific, real stupid. You guys can maybe relate because you're both comics. Stop calling sketches skits. <laughs> don't don't say that. No, everyone who doesn't and and like the here's the thing. Sketches are skits. Okay, so sketches are like Saturday Night Live, Key and Peele things we like, things that are maybe sometimes bad and need to like stop early and not go on forever and the writing could be better, but hey, they're, you know, sometimes they're good. And skits are like campfire Christian camp, you know, when it's like, we're going to tell the story mm -hmm. of Jesus, you know, or like, hey, mom, come to the living room. I really want to show you this skit that my brother and I were working on. This is just my life. Um, that's a skit. A skit <laughs> involves blanket forts. A sketch is you know, you're, you've got like WGA behind you. You've got like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like you're a good, you're a writer, <laughs> a real writer. All right. But I also think it's funny just for all the improvisers out there and all the other like people who are super mad that people call their stuff sketches or skits. Is it at the end of the day, you just add like a few blanket forts to SNL and that's exactly what it is. It's just a skit. It's a skit <laughs> at a, with a campfire, <laughs> like it's just, like, just a, a broke version, and then just I like that you 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 brought in the union. You're like, there's there's a WGA. That's all I, want. Uh, all I want. All I want to be part is to be part of the guild. I'm not part of the WGA, but that's really that's like my goal. <laughs> I've heard um skit like people have said that about stand up. Like, hey, that was a nice skit. Yeah, oh, you know, like after you get off stage, they're like, hey, that was a nice skit. And I'm like, you know, as an immigrant, I'm still like learning new words. And I'm just like, I feel like, okay, maybe I've been doing it, saying that, like, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I guess I do skits on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I, yeah, skits are really either 10 year olds are doing them or, or your, or your boss is doing them at the, oh God. at the right. Christmas party. Um, <laughs> that's always fun. Right, right, that always right. is well. Laugh at it. Oh, uh, so funny. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's a simple mistake, but sketches, not skits. Skits are for children, uh, not sketches. Um, I'm gonna look and see other uh, a, a few comments here. Javier Fernandez says Lincoln Project is an anti-zombie fanboy squad. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I get that. People want to know what the Lincoln Project is. Uh, it's basically like repentant, never, not repentant, but never Trump folks, Republicans, people who are like the party of Reagan. Remember how good Reagan was? No, Reagan was shit. And yeah. we do remember. The party um, of Reagan. Yeah, not a single man that was gay that is my age is alive because of Reagan and AIDS. So yeah, the Reagan worship, it's too right. But it's exciting to people because it's like, well, I guess they're helping, you know, lose votes for Trump by being witty. Did they get comedians to run their Twitter? I don't know. But yeah. I think well, I think they're just Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I feel like they've stolen some comedians' jokes too, straight up. But anyway. <laughs> right? Like I there was an why can't Democrats be funny and brutal. I'm so fuck I'm just so tired. Of, of like this strongly worded letter politics. It's like, stop bringing a PowerPoint presentation to a knife fight. We're in a knife fight. Show right. up with a knife, please. <laughs> you know, I mean, I go, I go. The, and Liz, the we're project is the, are the people that are going to do all this. Someone's going to be beholden to the Lincoln project, right? You don't want memes at the knife fight. You don't want memes or like a. We definitely need memes. We need the dankest memes. <laughs> um, I hear you. Yes. Don't bring. Uh, we 
Well, Liz, we will be talking about Joe Biden's debate performance. So don't you worry about okay. uh, <laughs> bringing, as I say, wet, wet noodles to the knife fight. Um, Bob Dabalina on YouTube says, the gas is emitted by the rot from apples promotes more rot. That's oh, oh, that's the Apparently. sign on the rot. Wow. It's like sign. You mean like tear gas? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. boom. Pow, pow. <laughs> what? Um, Whoa. I was, I always hey, lose everyone's what they're bitching about, but I, I think there were a few people bitching about essential workers not being respected. Yes, agreed. Um, but I'm going to move on because the story of the last three days has been Whoa. one and only, and we, we're going to get into it in our next segment, The Week Wear. Hey, this was the week where the Wicked Witch got the Rona. Ding dong, he's not dead. Um, <laughs> break out the memes, let's celebrate. Uh, I have to say COVID is the opposition party we've been waiting for. Thank God uh, we have some real resistance, real resistance on this Lincoln Project BS. Um, Trump tweeted on Thursday night that he and Flotus had tested positive for COVID-19. And on Friday, he was transferred to Walter Reed Hospital, which is only about half an hour away. Uh, but I think he was transferred in helicopter. Um, he's been given a bunch of experimental medicine, antiviral, immune boosting cocktails. Um, yet the head of, the, of uh, Walter Reed, the head doctor responsible for Trump, has been really cagey about his condition, initially not answering whether the president has been on oxygen or not. And then later claiming today that he didn't tell the American people the full truth because he didn't want to, quote, give any information that might steer the course of the illness in another direction. And that he was, quote, reflecting the upbeat attitude the team has had. Um, it appears they're using every trick in the book to heal the president. And that book is The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. <laughs> Ch change your thoughts and it'll change the virus. It'll change your charts. Like they're making a vision board in there, you know, a lot of healthy lungs and just like little cutouts. Um, since it's happened, of course, uh, God, the news cycle has been insane. We've been treated to a myriad of bizarre sort of Kim Jong-unian reassurances that Trump is fine. He's released a couple of videos uh, where he didn't have his bronzer on, which I was very, like, very proud, you know, baby steps. Um, a few vi videos of himself. He released photos of himself signing blank pieces of paper uh, with a Sharpie. Because after four years, they still don't know how to pretend to be president. Like, they, they can't even get that part right. Um, the videos are very hostage-like. Uh, and then finally, uh, there was this today, a bizarre motorcade where Secret Service took the president out for a spin so he could wave from his SUV to his adoring fans. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He a COVID party. He cannot resist creating situations where people are unsafe, even when he himself is like oozing and seeping the killer gaseous infection droplets. Yeah. He had yeah. to do a little drive by wave. Um, this is obviously way wider and a deadlier reboot of Menace to Society. Uh, or as I like to call it, boys in the clan hood. That is what that was. <laughs> Just a drive-by, like, hello. Do you guys, okay, thoughts and reactions this whole time. Where were you when you found out? What did you do? Have you been on Trump death watch? Do you think he's going to die? In the comments? No, you all. Oh, 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 I was already drinking. It's just not fair. I can't drink anymore. And you're right. Like earlier you were saying, I'm sipping water because I have to be ready. You're right. I can't go to a knife fight hungover. Never have That's I ever. True. I've never been in a knife fight. And here I am. Of course I want to celebrate. And it's like I was. And then I was like, no, but then uh, how am I going to be ready? You know, how am I going to be <laughs> If I have to 
get up and run. I mean, earthquakes, wildfires. Now, who knows? You know what I mean? Also, who's that? The, I love the guy in the video who's like, yes, 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 at Donald Trump just driving and just getting, just even getting a little bit of a peek at him just really excites people. And it's like, he's not. Oh yeah, he was, he was very, he had like a half chub for that moment. And that was gross. That's what I thought you were going with. He did a little, a little hard on and he did, he probably did. There was like one guy you can hear him kind of like, it's really him. Like, wow, your Messiah who for months told you that this virus was fake and or invented by China and or who knows. And man, yeah. it got in swiping distance so many times finally struck also to be his driver do you have to have maybe tested positive in the past so you're more you were mean to it i'm just worried about his drivers or maybe <laughs> like, i'm not did they draw you know straws to see who was gonna drive him around <laughs> yeah it's the most annoying one that everyone hates they're like ben it's you again and he's like oh he has covid i have to drive him okay fine and then it's just like they have families too Jesus, I know. very true. Well, I was, I had just gotten off stage. I was, I just literally stepped off stage and it was like, Hope Hicks has COVID. And I was like, oh my God. And then, and then I stayed up all night just to read about Hope Hicks. And then I was like, literally, um, God, if she dies of COVID, I hope she has a, puts all her shit on Poshmark. Cause she's got really, like, I wanted like, she's got this, this camel color coat that kept showing Hope Hicks walking around. I was like, I like that coat. I really want that coat. I like to take that coat off of her hand. Who and gets that if she dies? I know, but also just knowing, and just to me, it's just the grossness of, oh, and also they were in Minnesota, right? To me, it's just the self, it's just the unbridled selfishness of knowing and traveling around and then just spreading it around. It, it just, I, I'm simply, um, I'm just simply stunned. And I shouldn't be, but I just am stunned at the sociopathic nature of all of them. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a cadre of people who have apparently no one's learned the social compact that they live in. It's like, if you wanna go be Tess Kaczynski and go live in your cabin and be psycho COVID deniers, have at it. But you live in the world with others. And that is the part that I'm just endlessly like, how does this happen? And the second yeah. they had that super spreading event for uh, Scary Decisis, that's what I call Amy Coney Barrett. Um, <laughs> they had that crazy, in the, and I watched her walk in with her seven children and all of these unmasked assholes, this, she is like the evangelical spank bank, this Amy Tony Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then I just thought, this is super gross. You all are gross. And then they're just all sick and Bill Barr's walking around like job of the wood, you know, just like all of it's just bad. Um, what's mm -hmm. what's weirder is that more people would have been sick if some of them already didn't get COVID because they were already reckless. You know, uh, Amy already had COVID. Yeah, that's that's why she didn't get it because they they've been reckless. So that's the crazy part is all of them already got it throughout. You know what I mean? There would be more if they hadn't yeah, already right. been reckless. And then I don't Absolutely. know about you, but like when I hear people say, like I think the level of stupidity that I, I sort of am trying to process and wake up every day and find a reason to live. When people are like, um, well, you know, like kids will get COVID and they, they get over it really fast. And like, maybe that's true. But if a kid gives COVID to a person that doesn't get over it really fast, the kind of COVID you get isn't the kind of COVID you give to someone else. I sure. literally think people think that like, if you had a mild case of COVID and you're walking around with it, that everyone you come in contact with is just gonna have a little bit of the vid. No, it's uh, it, it, interestingly, Hope Hicks had a lot of symptoms, like had bad symptoms, was not feeling good. And so that, you know, they're always talking about like how much of it did you get exposed to? Seems like she got exposed to a lot. She is young. Um, mm -hmm. And she yet still rode back on the plane from Cleveland uh, with the rest of the gang and tried to uh, quarantine herself somewhere. On a plane. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you which one does that look on like? On a plane. A Send t-shirt over your head? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like what Sorry. exactly? She was no, breaking it's, into the barf bag. I, I want to go over who has COVID at this point of Trump's inner circle and what is being now traced to that Rose Garden introduction of Amy Coney Barrett, if I can remember her name, uh, <laughs> at the sort of like the the announcement of her nomination. Um, we have, hang on, I had it here. Hope Hicks, which we talked about. Kellyanne Conway, which her daughter announced on TikTok and then she confirmed. Campaign manager Bill uh, Stepien. Trump aide Nick Luna. RNC chair Ronna McDaniel, that bitch. Um, <clears throat> Senators Mike Lee of Utah, Tom Tillis of North Carolina, and Ron Johnson of Minnesota. No, All Wisconsin. of these people, Wisconsin. most of them I, what? Ron Johnson's Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Uh, my bad, Wisconsin. Um, these, most of those people were at the Rose Garden. Other people, uh, did I mention Chris Christie? Did I think I was saving that for last? Chris Christie <laughs> currently in the hospital. Uh, look, when you're an unrepentant asshole, honestly, RBG fucks with you from beyond the grave. And that is exactly what has happened. Or maybe just science. Um, I just want to, I feel like finally, can we finally talk about white on white crime? You guys, <laughs> this, this just begs, like, look at, look at what they did to each other. You know, like, does it have to come to that? Just like what it is, it. what is it about their culture that makes them like that? Well, I think <laughs> that. Um, thank you for taking it on, Liz. No, yeah, <laughs> it was a question. I mean, I, I guess was, like, when you look at the way they live and the lifestyles that they choose, um, you know, I've, I, I feel like they didn't pull themselves up by their mask straps. <laughs> and uh, I think that, that was really the problem is that it's like, I don't know, how much can we hand, how much can we give them? And they don't do anything, you know? It's like they just want a handout. They just want yep. a handout. And everything me, me, me. And then they touch their face and then they don't put on a mask. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's such yeah. a classic, it's such a world that I would never be invited to a pl private jet. Like, I'm just thinking of the tracing, a rose garden. Like, that's so, <laughs> that's not an, like, as we were never invited to that. Like, a, just an outdoors party and then take it inside for reception or whatever. It's like so fancy. And then and then private jet, it's like, yeah, this white on white crime, it's, um, it's all the things that they wanted to enjoy at a time where so many people have sacrificed enjoying things. Like yes. that's what, you know, um, and that's, that's what happens when you're stubborn. We've all <sighs> sacrificed. We've all not gone to Disneyland. Well, some people have. Dude, I really, I really, really, really want to get to the rise of the resistance. That's the one thing I want, you know, when all this is over, that's why we need, national testing i want to go to the rise of resistance at disneyland thank you guys we turn on super chat brooklyn mm -hmm. 80, 86 um won't won't even use the most effective masks because you know fashion i feel like that's in reference to hope hicks if she could only get some sort of camel type mm -hmm. aren't, aren't there masks going for like multiple thousands of dollars outfits. hope hicks can afford that yeah um, JS there for ETA says Conway's daughter has COVID now too. What a crap mom. Oh, Claudia got the oh, Rona. No. Damn it. I know. Um, she'll be fine. She'll just dance it out on right. a TikTok. Right. Um, but Alyssa Burdick, uh, 20 bucks. Thank you so, so much. Guys, can I just say though, just so you know, in terms of all this, like it's never going to happen to me. It can't happen to me low key, super race, maybe high key racist that happens to essential workers, i.e. black and brown people. Uh, we know disproportionately affected. The White House didn't have a mask policy until now. You like, were they fucking doing, were they still doing like tours and shit or like right this way? <laughs> yeah, please lick everything you see. You know, like what? <laughs> no one had to wear a mask until like there's, your what you you know your mom and pop shop has more regulations. Like your your outdoor comedy show has more regulations <laughs> than the White House, and those well, motherfuckers are dirty. 
I just feel like it, for anybody who's still unclear about white privilege, it is the height of white privilege to have been afforded uh, a circumstance in your life and a way to walk the earth to think you will avoid death. Like, <laughs> yeah. that is unbelievable to me. Right. No, yeah. The and ultimate white privilege. I'm like, who gets to, who gets to walk around thinking, I'm not going to get, why would I get sick? I'm completely immune from the thing that all these millions of people are getting. Like, that's insanity. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. When, when the human body, for the most part, functions similar, what whatever race you are. <laughs> yes. Whatever circumstance. No, and, and Bill Barr, by the way, who honestly, I'm really hoping, look, I'm not wishing for people's deaths. Well, I won't cry. Maybe I, will there be streamers? Yeah, but that's just because they were already in my house and I happened to put them up. Okay, yeah, I got balloons and a cake, but look, I'm not going to celebrate. The point is this, mm -hmm. I do relish in pain. And you got to relish in the pain because we've been living this nightmare and we have had a horrible opposition party uh, responding to this nightmare, relishing it for all the children separated at the border, uh, for all the families ripped apart, relishing it. There's going to be pain. Well, William still, Barr right, is, not, oh, is not positive. That's where I was starting with this. He's tested negative according to the DOJ, but the DOJ is just sort of a, a group of loyalist squirrels kind of like typing out random no like i don't know who's in the doj anymore so i don't know if i trust that i mean the fact that kelly on conway was literally breathing into his face for <laughs> a minute and a half there's one piece of footage i don't know how long it went <laughs> i just stopped at one minute and a half um literally breathing into his face and into his ear like some kind of corona spin art you know <laughs> and and the guy walks away I mean, I, maybe they're making half of the Trump administration employees in a lab. Maybe they're just not even human. I don't, yeah, it was he? He wasn't positive before. How did he not get it? I, I have, and and it sucks. I feel bad for her daughter now too, Claudia Conway, because it's like, mom, you you didn't have to take time off for family time for me. God damn it! Now I have it, and it's like you know George doesn't have it because they don't hang out. So it's like, sorry. Now <laughs> also, I feel bad for a TikToker. <laughs> exactly. Now you made me feel bad for Claudia. No, look, I thought Kellyanne was trying to take time away to be with her family. I feel like she spent more time with the Trump administration <laughs> in her retirement than before. Like she was like, I got to take family time, but the RNC, but the Rose Garden, but this, but that, whatever. Um, these and her family jokes. was like, um, we would literally rather spend time with anyone else. Anyone else. <laughs> Like, right. Feel free to not ever be here. They wanted Corona just so they could quarantine from Kellyanne. But Ooh. now that she has it too, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. Foiled. <laughs> She's um, like, see, family time. <laughs> I know. Maybe I wonder too, like, who Melania actually got it from. Because mm. the amount of time she spends with uh, that garbage barnacle is like zero. <laughs> Right. Well, it's just from literally standing next to him at like the debate, I'd probably. Can you imagine how pissed the only the only contact she has is her forced public time? Yeah, I would be so pissed. Oh, God. You're like I, I am always six feet away. I am usually <laughs> seventeen feet away. I've, I've <laughs> lost, I've lost the accent, but I want to get it back because I want to do one other story. One, because th this is the main story, y'all, and we're going to talk. We want to talk about uh, ACB and what it means for reproductive rights. I, yes, I said it. Um, shout out to Chuck Diesel. Thank you so much for that uh, that donation on the super chat. One more story. Let's skip over the debate. It was heinous. It might not happen again. Whatever. But this was the week where, buried by these COVID al uh, allegations, COVID allegations against our <laughs> valiant and strong president. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID revelations, um, hours after, very a la grab them by the pussy, Podesta dump D DNC emails, right? Just like three hours after. Um, what happened before 
on that Thursday was secret recordings of First Lady Melania Trump were made public by her one-time friend, Stephanie Winston Walkoff, um, in which she both shits on Christmas and children separated at the border. I just want to play you a little clip of that if you missed it. They say I'm, I'm complicit. I'm the same like him. I support him. I don't no. say enough. I don't do enough. No. It's, where, it's, where I am, they, I put the, I'm working like a ass, my ass. I, I know. The Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? Yeah, but a hundred percent. You have and no then, choice. And okay, and then I do it, and I say that I'm working on Christmas uh, planning for the Christmas, and they said, "Oh, what about the children that they were separated? Give me a break! Do, uh, where, where they were saying anything when Obama did that? I know. Do, do, I cannot go. I I was trying to get the the kid reunited with the mom. I, I, I didn't have a chance. It needs to go through the process and through the law. But here. Oh, fucking so Christmas! Uh, <laughs> before she was working so hard, I mean that whole like she was just trapped in the Christmas bins. <laughs> get out! I was just wrapped up in my own crazy Gilead Holly book. <laughs> I wanted to help the children, but I just. I just couldn't with the Christmas. I was trying with the Christmas. No, with the Christmas. I hate the kids and the kids with the Christmas. Why the don't kids they and the Christmas? The children, they always take up all the space on Christmas too. They want to sit on Santa's lap. I want to sit on Santa's lap too. Okay. Look, let me just say, if, if her attempt at reuniting families, which she intimated in there, she said she was trying to reunite a family. If that is anything like her attempt at her Christmas decorations, uh, she didn't try at all. Uh, instead, she just covered both with blood. That was but, her response. Yeah. I cannot try. I cannot do. I work like ass. I work my ass. I am ass. Look, it's not funny to make fun of people's accents or like their inability to speak English perfectly, except in this case, yes, it's absolutely <laughs> fine and fun to make fun of the accent and her speaking English poorly. Um, uh, yeah. What were you more She's upset? Sorry. She cannot, she gets zero passes at, 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 at I was cock blocked. My compassion was cock blocked. Bitch, shut <laughs> up, look. She says she sits there. My hope, my goal is to help the children. I want to help the vulnerable children. Or as she, it's like, if you wanted to help the vulnerable children, why were you hanging around with Jeffrey Epstein? That would have been a first place to stop <laughs> in yeah. your path to helping the vulnerable children. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, <sighs> anyone, any? I feel like the internet made more of, of a deal about her comments of Christmas, which. Makes sense just because we live in an age where the right freaks out about happy holidays being written on Starbucks cups. And yeah. There's many, many hours of television devoted to the war on Christmas. And now the first lady just shitting all over it. Just why? Why do I have to do this? She's not wrong. She's not wrong. But it's just funny that the Grinch is coming from inside the White House. Yeah, I mean, she, the decorations say she's pissed, you know. She's just like, I hate everything. You know, I'm being forced, possibly. I don't know. But again, she's not physically putting up the trees. She probably just picks a color and that's it. Well, that's, I mean, mm -hmm. if you guys remember some of her weird, like, I mean, that, that first Christmas, it looked like it was like north of the wall. Like, it looked like some <laughs> wild ass. Game of Thrones, horrible <laughs> Christmas nightmare where I was like, you know what? I feel like Requiem for a Dream was more joyful. In the, like, I would rather have a Requiem for a Dream themed Christmas <laughs> White House than your insane white winter isolated, like Ibsen-esque Christmas yeah. terrors that you would like all of us to experience for the children. Like it would be mm -hmm. like, it would be terrifying for children to go to the Trump Christmas White House. You know what it is? I think it's her trying to be high fashion with just like mm -hmm. one, like a bold color, but like high fashion is real trashy when you just like, you know, that you get that Eastern Euro flair and then Trump's like golds. It's just, 
you are a villain. You know, it is very Game of Thrones where it's like, which cousin did you just fuck? You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, Deco, weird, like, yeah, weird Deco Christmas. It's like, don't, just don't do that. Don't, nobody wants to see that. No one wants to see your interpretation of right. Christmas because you went to an art show and you whatever, like no one gets that shit. Just throw up some multicolored lights, make yeah. sure, look, if they don't blink, you can fuck right off, okay? They better <laughs> fucking blink. You better get some <laughs> blinky light. The blinky is the best. All you need is blink. And then it's beautiful People and everyone love loves it. it. People love, <laughs> love it. Get those runners, get those runners, just trails. Right. Just trails. Yeah, yeah. Get a, a train, get a long train. Get a long train. It's because she's settling for metal. It's like, just stand there and don't do anything or go all out. Exactly, bitch, you know? I know. Because You're, truth be told, you married this fucker. We didn't. Right. Yeah. You've defended him. Boys talk. It's just, boy. this is boys talk. Obama, <laughs> he not born here. Like, she's, you weren't born here, okay? I'm sorry. No. The only xenophobia I tolerate is against Melania Trump. All the rest of it is bullshit racist crap, but not against Melania. All right, go back to Slovenia. They built you a, a statue there. Retire there. Fake but your own death. That do whatever. Statue. They they didn't like her that much because they that statue was ugly. That statue was <laughs> like statue it, was so scary. It was it looked like a gummy bear had been smushed in. You know, and you know when you like push a gummy bear. Yeah, like, I. No, it was someone being forced to build that too. They were like, "Oh God, fine. Can we just smush all her 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 neck and her face and her body together, and just paint it really quick blue?" Hello. Uh, anyway, w guys, we're not the assholes. She's the asshole. They're <laughs> the assholes. All right. That I just want to remember. Right. Asshole check in time. Mm -hmm. They're the assholes. Yeah. Um, you know, anybody calling me an asshole right now is an asshole. I'm sorry. I'm just like, what? No is one. No one is. Everyone, everyone who watches and future people who are listening, y'all are dope as fuck. Uh, I'm just saying generally, don't feel bad about relishing in the pain if you take anything away from this episode. In addition to what we're about to talk about right now, let's get into it. Let's get let's get real. We've got Liz Winstead here. She's a gem. She's a joy. Uh, and I want to talk about something really real, which is the future of Roe v. Wade under Attor uh, not attorney general, uh, under ACB, under Judge ACB. Um, yes. What is going to happen? This is the sitch. The confirmation is rolling on. Yes, a few senators are sick. They're going to get over it. Whatever. Maybe they'll die. It doesn't matter. They'll keep tweeting. But the confirmation shall uh, continue scheduled for October 12th. The Judiciary Committee does not intend to delay the proceedings, um, even though Mitch McConnell has suggested that they could be at least a little remote, which is like, yeah, you think? Maybe do that part. Maybe do what we're all doing and just live online. Um, already, there are shirts that say Notorious ACB, just replacing RBG's head and swapping in ACB's face on top of her, just, um, I don't know how more literally you can piss on someone's legacy. Oh yeah, uh, rolling back Roe v. Wade in the ACA. Liz, your thoughts, I wanna get into this, but your thoughts overall on who this woman is. Who is this judge? Who is Amy Coney Barrett? Um, and yeah, what, what, what do you know about her? Um, well, um, she, she is a wealth of awful. Uh, her background, um, if she gets on the court, uh, she will be the uh, sixth Catholic justice. So I apparently um, strains of Catholicism is what makes up her diversity on the court. Um, belongs to a crazy ass strain cult, whatever you want to call it, where you actually have to pledge allegiance to this cult and you are assigned a spiritual Jesus whisperer. Uh, the women have somebody who's literally called a handmaid and you have to make a pledge that the men are the, the ruler of the household. Um, it's that part of it's a, a mess. Um, right. I know on her judicial background, she has already ruled in Indiana. Uh, she lives in South Bend, Indiana from South Bend, Notre Dame. Um, she's ruled on two different abortion rulings that have already um, curbed back on Roe v. Wade. One is a parental consent law, 
where in normally in a state, if you are a minor seeking an abortion, um, if you cannot go to your parents for whatever reason, you can go right. through the court system and get a judicial bypass. She ruled that um, if people want to ban and not allow a teen to do that and they can't get an abortion if their parents don't let them or the inseminator, um, your abortion's out. Uh, and then also ruled um, saying that it is constitutionally fine to force um, burial and cremation of every fetus that's ever been aborted. And it would be up to the um, clinic to be able to do these crazy ass funerals for fetuses. Uh, and so she's already ruled on that. I think when we talk about access to abortion, um, the Roe v. Wade, as it was, as it was, as it was passed in or ruled on in 1973, is a sh a shadow of itself. So mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade is simply um, it's it's hanging on by a thread because there's been so many caveats to it. Um, what's going to happen is all of the caveats that they've wanted to pass of laws that are now within state houses that are passed or within various states of the federal courts, if those get to the Supreme Court and if it is an Amy Coney Barrett Supreme Court, um, mm -hmm. abortion access will be ruled against time and time and time and time again. She signed on to a paper in 2006 from Indiana Right to Life that said abortion is barbaric. She is right. on record. She doesn't believe that birth control is something that uh, you, you know you should be able to get paid for under the ACA. Um, you know she is she is. Somebody, but she's going to put all that aside once she becomes a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, that's what they always say. I'm just going to put all that all those beliefs that I have aside when I believe that there's a higher power than the Constitution and it's Jesus. Um, I'm just going to put that aside. I'm going to put my own. Who would ever say, and why would you believe someone who would be like, I'm going to put aside my uh, eternal salvation for the good of, of the Constitution of the uh, <laughs> earthly place I will live on for another 40 years. What if you got to heaven and Amy Coney Barrett was also on the Supreme Court there? Like, is she hoping, <laughs> is she gunning? <laughs> Is that what she's gunning for? Like a position in heaven, Supreme Court? That's I feel feels like a little all that heaven. I feel like if she's in charge of anything, we might have to come up with a different name for what that place is. Right. That's what I always feel like when I when I see anti choicers with like the bloody fetus signs, who I know your organization confronts on the daily and so many of the the groups that you support and work with, I'm always like, um, Hey, about heaven, man with fetus sign. Are you are you gonna be there? Cause yeah. if so, like I'm yeah. good. No, okay, you are cool, cool. Just yeah, definitely never gonna believe. Definitely. Yeah, never. I feel like that's true. And also, the same bloody fetus sign people are the same men who had who were the my body, my choice. I can't wear a mask. <laughs> yes, right. they're the same people. I literally the same people. And I was like, you know, the difference between you and your mask and a pregnant person is that a pregnant person doesn't stand six feet from someone and give them pregnant. <laughs> right, right. I wish they could though. That would be a superpower that I would Ooh, want. And I although they would get to heaven quicker by continuing not to wear the mask though. True. As yeah. well. I don't know. There's logic. There's logic of what they're saying is all I'm saying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, they'll get there. I'm with you, 100%. Liz, they're always logical. Liz, are you at, is there a shred of doubt that the Republicans will, and the Republican Senate will confirm Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, whether before or after uh, the election? Um, there isn't a shred of doubt, although I was reading, um, Norm Ornstein had the greatest idea, which I am totally in favor of. And that is if there becomes enough Republicans that have COVID and that like makes it so that there's a democratic majority in the Senate that could show up, yeah. Chuck Schumer could call to order all the, the, uh, the Senate to come and then the Corona people can't come, wouldn't be able to come. They could vote to make Chuck Schumer, the Senate majority leader, 
And then immediately the first thing they do is say nobody with COVID can come into the chambers. And then all of the committee members, the committee chairs would be Democrats. And then they just wouldn't call a hearing on her. Because that's what the really? Republicans would do. If it was reversed, they'd be like, oh, look, we're immediately just going to call to order, elect a new Senate majority leader. It's now our party. Um, yep. No COVID people can come and vote. Um, yep. And look, oh, now we have all the committees. We're not going to do call any of your bullshit stuff. That I love this plan. I also, we need to give Chuck Schumer a new personality and oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. principles and like, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe some more Adderall, maybe Trump can <laughs> share it, but like I mean, we need, we need a different Chuck Schumer if we're going to do that. That's, that's exactly the type of shit I want to see. I, I want to see here like, nope, nope, sorry, we can't. Mm -mm. No, no. See, we're in control now because you guys are all sticky poo. Gross, 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 gross. You're disgusting. Uh, you're endangering the American people and us. So, you know, we, we get to run. The fact that you contracted coronavirus as a congressman, congressperson, seriously though, seriously, is is a failure of leadership because you yeah. didn't wear your mask, right? Now I'm not saying if you like that's blanket, but it really does show that this entire party doesn't have the wherewithal to lead. They don't have; they're not able to lead this country. Look, they can't even take care of themselves and their families. Um, I would love that to happen. I think this analysis around, is it going to excite the Republican base to voting people for people like Tom Tillis or Lindsey Graham or Murkowski or Collins who are all on the ropes when it comes to their individual Senate elections? I don't think so because some of those people have said they wouldn't vote before the election anyway, right? And if they, anyway, the point is, I see this happening no matter what. I see it happening no matter what. And I don't think that the conservatives who love anti-choice stuff and, and, and hate abortion um, are going to come back around to Trump's side. I think they still hate Trump. I think they still hate Trump and they know that they can have their cake and leave the, sh the rotten part. Do you know what I mean? Well, right. it's like they are the people who vote for them don't care about integrity or honesty. They don't have to. You know, they do not have to in any way, shape or form have integrity. They're, the Republicans are laughing at us. They're like, the people who vote for us view integrity the way you would view if I shat into a fan you were staring in. Like they don't <laughs> you know, it's like it doesn't matter. And so the sooner that we understand and stop saying things like, well, maybe Mitt Romney will come around. If your hopes are on Mitt Romney, <laughs> here's a hot tip. Your second marriage is also going to fail. You have terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. You know, I get this. I yeah. Love it. Yeah. He, no. He, I, I, he was a bad boy one time with chocolate milk. That was it. That mm -hmm. was it. That was one time. And then he marched with Black Lives Matter one time. That was it. Over. But I thought it was when he left his dog on the roof. That was pretty bad boy, too. That was like, <laughs> hell yeah, no. Romney. Yeah, that was profound. Right, right. That was him <laughs> being like, I'm not afraid of a divorce. I'm not afraid of, yeah, animal rights activists. No. I, um, so this is a very bizarre analogy, but s some, you know, activists who tried to stop the Brett Kavanaugh um, confirmation, I've, t I've heard from them that they stared into the eyes of Susan Collins and it was like, the same eyes that like a chicken has, just like the, the the dead chicken eyes. Like there is nothing behind those. There's no soul there. There's no morals. There's no tinge of, yeah, maybe we shouldn't confirm an alleged rapist to the Supreme Court. Nope, there's it's not there. She doesn't feel those feelings. Um, so yeah, I trust that. Like, you know, when you look at someone in the face, like, is there anything there? It's uh, strictly opportunism. But I, again, I don't think it's going to necessarily bring people out to vote for Republicans or to vote for Trump. Because I think they're like, we you're, we know you're a piece of shit anyway, and we can sort of enjoy that um, and we don't have to vote for you. Well, even I in the lame, fact, yeah. I'm sorry, what I would even say further is their panic and, and they're forcing her through in this bizarre way shows me that they think they're going to lose the Senate and the White House, that they're afraid. 
Um, so, it, but I don't think, I don't think that it's going to bring out a Trump supporter. You know, I, I guess what I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to bring out the Lincoln Project folks to vote for them. I feel like Mer I feel like all these lame duck senators, even if you're right, which I hope you are, man, I hope we flip the Senate. I feel like they would confirm her anyway. And might I even say, I think Democrats might fucking confirm her. What do you think about that? Would Democrats confirm her mm. if they were, if it would, the ball was in their court and she's been floated as the nominee? No, no, no. She is so radical. What was, what was fascinating though, was um, this, this praise, praise church or whatever it's called um, that she belongs to that thing I was talking about that yeah. was out there in the universe when she was up for the federal bench and Diane Feinstein alluded to it, but nobody went deep hard in. And it's like the orthodoxy is strong with you. I think it was something, it was like a very like Obi-Wan, yeah. like That's oh, yeah. extremism, <laughs> extremism is strong with this. And one. she loved it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Amy was stoked. Yeah, but it was, it's like, and that's the thing that's so utterly frightening to me is that the lower courts are now just riddled with Amy's. There's a million Amy's uh, who are just chomping at the bit um, to, to, have led, to have legislation move through their courts into a Supreme Court that is going to be led by um, wildly extreme and not only is there six Catholics, it, Amy will break the mold of the current Supreme Court, which is all of them have gone to two law schools, Yale and Harvard. Jesus. Every person sitting on that bench now. Amy Gross. went to Notre Dame. Or yeah. I don't know if she went to Notre Dame law, but she's definitely a Notre Dame person. But yeah, you know, so there's just no diversity of thought, background, um, legal um, challenge. You know, right. it's just a big, in fact, if they get one more Trump judge, their robe should have to be white. <laughs> Absolutely. Stop. Dude, let me, let me ask you, Liz, I wanted to know, do you think Roe v. Wade, we know the ACA is going to be probably overturned. Um, and with it, right, we, we, you and I have spoken about how um, so much of the right wing backlash to the ACA was maybe disingenuously or genuine in in good faith put pressure on like or, or was around excuse me access to um birth control and how that and abortion if yeah a birth control and abortion and if and when we ever get medicare for all i think you've rightly said and pointed out that don't like you absolutely cannot have the medicare for all fight without having the reproductive rights fight yeah, of this so is Yes. Uh, and that women's yeah. reproductive freedom will always be used against progress. Why the fuck? Why is that? Why? Well, why I'll this tell you why. And here's why. And it's even the framing of this conversation, right? When we, mm -hmm. the only time we ever talk about abortion is mm -hmm. in framed in legislative terms, crisis terms, and Roe v. Wade. We don't talk about abortion on a day-to-day -day basis and within conversations, having hard conversations, trying to normalize access to abortion, trying to really create spaces and reworking the conversation so that yeah. if, if, if abortion can still be stigmatized, no mm -hmm. one's going to care about it. And until we work towards having people fundamentally understand that your reproductive choices and your access to the reproductive care that you need, if that is not part of who you are and accessible to you, you are not, you do not have full value in this society and you will not be able to access your self-determination. And unless mm -hmm. we have those conversations all the time, and unless we have people saying, I want to advocate to talk, to normalize abortion, to make sure it's accessible. Men, women, everybody, all genders, understanding that bodily autonomy cannot be something we only talk about in a framing of legislative and and legislative rights. We're screwed. So that's yeah. why I do it every day to try to, um, to just try to have those conversations going all the time because society's got to say. I absolutely demand this for everybody who wants it. 
Absolutely. I, um, I haven't yeah. really worked it out on a, on stage, but I, I, I did say this recently, you know, um, a lot of people say like, well, what if your mom had an abortion? What if she, you know, what if she, she had an abortion? My mom <laughs> had an abortion. She fucking did. She aborted the kid who she had with the married asshole she was dating before she met my dad who promised to leave his wife and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And she had an abortion. And but I didn't find out until later in life. She didn't, she didn't continue her pregnancy. No, 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 no. She didn't continue. It wasn't a kid, yeah, well, but you know what I'm saying? Right, she, her right. life, the way we her talk life about changed. The way right. yeah, no, no, right. No, no, right. Really, really if she matters. aborted the, the, the zygote from a piece of shit yeah. who was not going to take care of it anyway, if it did ever become a kid, yeah. and ergo, I got a chance at life because she found someone else and had a kid in the way that she wanted yeah. to have it. And, also, and if you like, were aborted, you wouldn't know. So who cares? I know. I that that argument never makes sense to me because that's assuming I I'm happy to be here. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I know that's dark, but like you're acting <laughs> yeah. like I'm so stoked to be here on yeah. Earth. You know, like I never wanted to be here anyway, actually. So exactly like you said, Liz, like I wouldn't have known if I was never here. Yeah. I don't freaking yeah. care. I don't and freaking you, care. Yep. And going back to the ACA conversation and how we talk about healthcare. Truth be told, until this country honors all pregnancy outcomes and a poor woman with an unintended pregnancy who would maybe like to keep that pregnancy, and we have a country that builds um, resources and says, we want you to be able to have the family that you want. And if, if that and if that means terminating a pregnancy like your mom did so that she could eventually have you or somebody else could be able to carry a child to term and have resources, until we have a country that values all of it, Everybody shut the fuck up about the choice somebody else wants to make because only they know yeah. what's best for their life. Mm. Yeah. God, yes. they, they, these people are horny though, right? Yeah, they they the are time. a little obsessive horny. They're just watching wop, 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 wop. And then they're like, I couldn't, I can't stop watching it. <laughs> I hate it. 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 A woman's body. I just can't stop thinking about the thing. Yeah. The thing about WAP though is like when WAP to me means you are fertile AF. Like you got to be careful if, you know, unless you're trying to have a baby, but that like WAP sure. is a sign as a right. biological sign. WAP is more like, wow, 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 wow. That's what's coming <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Um, Liz, you're wonderful, and thank you for your work. Um, I just want to shout out Abortion AF, Abortion Access Front, and the incredible job that you guys do of making sure that we destigmatize abortion, talk about not pro-lifers but anti-choicers, um, and doing this hard work that isn't, a, you're totally right, isn't just legislative, it's interpersonal, it's about full reproductive health. Yep. Um, and doing it in a way that's like fun and and as and and respond to the absurdity of the year 2020 and still having this be somehow a controversial discussion. That's unbelievable. Uh, and you guys do that so well. So definitely check out Abortion Access Front and whenever they they're on tour, if they've I don't know if y'all have anything coming up. We do. We have a couple of things coming up. We're gonna be we're gonna be revising our comedy show online. So I'm gonna have both of you on, um, but also on yeah. election day, um, from 12 noon until midnight, there's gonna be a live comedy Zoom. And if, if either of you want in, let me know. Um, the purpose it, uh, a bunch of clubs and people who do um, weekly monthly shows are curating it so that people standing in line at the polls all day. We'll have a live, interesting, fun thing to do, and that will keep them occupied so that they won't leave the line. It's like, yes. don't leave the line. So uh, let me know if y'all want to be part of it. I will hook you up. Amazing. Oh, that sounds amazing. That's yeah. so, so good. Um, I, Liz, dude, I'm so sorry. Last question, because I have to do my due diligence and just ask this. If... Do you think Roe v. Wade's going to be overturned, or you think it's just going to be uh, chipping away and it's already been shelled and hollowed out anyway? Uh, I think that is oh. a very good chance that it can be overturned. And yeah. what people need to realize about Roe v. Wade being overturned is that what that means is that states will get to decide what kind of abortion access they have. There's already, uh, I think it's nine states, that have a trigger law that says if Roe v. Wade is overturned in the Supreme Court, abortion on all levels will automatically 
be undone in those states. So mm -hmm. it will be states deciding they will have it, states deciding they won't, states deciding on some other. Oh, we lost her for just oh, a sec. No. That's okay. We're moving on to our final segment. And it is called Draft Tweet. Draft Tweet Dodger. So you guys have been on Twitter. You know what it's like. You've got a thought in your head. You're like, maybe I'm going to tweet this out. You hit, you're about to hit send and you're like, you know what? Let's not say that now, or that's dumb, or I'm self-conscious, or I want to keep my job. So you don't send it and you just put it into your draft tweets. Let's not dodge that anymore. Let's, let's out with the draft tweets, you guys. What have you not tweeted that has just been waiting there in your drafts? Um, Atsuko, do you want to go first? I can also go first. Sure. Yeah, I'll go first. I'm like, I really want to hear the ones where you're like, I want to keep my job. I'm like, which ones were those? Okay, no, <laughs> don't do I that. I started calling the Republicans the rape publicans for a while. <laughs> and um, those are the ones I had to like go back and like, maybe I, maybe I'll soften on that. Was that a draft? Was that one of your drafts? No, those were actually deleted tweets. That's a different segment. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, yeah, I said um, I really had to pretend $750 wasn't a lot of money, and I hate him even more for that. And uh, I was like, no, that's like, let's just get on the train of $750 only, you know? I wasn't, I wasn't going <laughs> to suddenly be an immigrant. My immigrant broke, like, you know, growing up poor self and be like, you know, guys, $750 is a, actually a lot of money. I wasn't, you know, that's why I didn't tweet in it. That's why I didn't tweet it. <laughs> that's really funny. I think that's a perfectly good tweet, but you're right. That, that wasn't the train everyone was on. Everyone was right. on the how that's so that's nothing, but like most people right. would be like, I, I could use like that's a lot. 750 is would help. But yeah. But you've paid more taxes than that. And if you haven't, give me your accountant's number. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. I have. But 750, like if I found it on the street or something, that would be it would be helpful. My mom is on disability. And so she she is she gets nine hundred and thirty dollars a month. Um, and so, you know what I'm saying? Like 750 if she found it on the ground or something, that would be a lot. Oh, but yeah. that's a different circumstance, you know, for a guy who has a lot of a lot more money. Yes. Nine anyway. nine fifty, not much. I'm just like nine fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's also not like that's I guess rent maybe if you live in a small spot. Yeah, and barely right. But then there's food, and then she has medicine that she has to pay for anyway. Yeah, I like that draft tweet, Liz. Can you hear us? Are you back? You, I think you've muted yourself, Liz, but we'll... Uh... Oh, yes, she's muted. Liz, can you hear us? Liz is in, in the nether regions of, of internet connection. It's so bad, it's so sad. I'm so glad we at least got most of that interview, though, without her computer dying. Um, right. I'm gonna read a couple of mine. Uh, Draft tweets, never sent. There's a lot of them were like half half filled out. Okay, here we go. Uh, reminder that your, your pussy basura, my pussy horchata, is the best thing ever written. Thank you, Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just didn't feel like I needed to send that, but your pussy basura, my pussy horchata, is, is truly the best thing that's ever been committed to song. <laughs> Um, and so you were you were listening to the song and you were just like, I'm gonna give an appreciation tweet. Yes, it was it was a little bit of a thirst, like please follow me, Cardi. Um, another another tweet that I didn't tweet because you can tell you can tell me why, a little offensive. General elections are like college sex. Enthusiastic consent is few and far between. So strangely, when you demand that I enthusiastically consent to vote for Biden, it kind of feels like rape. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like you know what i dare you to tweet it i'm just kidding <laughs> i fucking dare you no i'm just gonna say it on my podcast at our you know one one hour and 15 minutes so no one will find it right and if course. i ever get a shot at snl 
Yeah. Uh, let's hope they didn't find this. You know what I mean? Oh, I think you'll be fine with that one. I feel like a lot of people feel that way or did. And they're like, okay, we won't talk about. We won't this was months ago. I am way more enthusiastic to vote for Biden now. Much more enthusiastic. Like, I'm still not like, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I wouldn't say enthused. I would say ready. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You just wouldn't equate it to rape anymore is what you're saying. I would <laughs> I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't equate it to rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> oh, okay. Liz! Yay! <laughs> you. I'm back, and I know I have the light behind me, but I'm I'm in this crazy Airbnb, and my power cord only reaches to where I just didn't I didn't plan things correctly. So, um. I'm sorry, I just interrupted. That's I, totally I, fine, Liz. Um, I'm gonna just to shout out well, Samuel exactly. Lee who has a draft tweet. Uh, he says he draft tweets threats to Republicans and then slept on it. Good, good to sleep on some of these draft tweets. Um, Liz, what's a draft tweet you never sent? God, I have one that I think I would get in trouble for saying, so I won't say it, I don't think, because it's pretty bad. Um, but a draft <laughs> Come tweet on. I think have is, um, so I came back to Minnesota in June and I have been in three different places to live and I lost my vibrator in one of them. So one of my draft tweets was going to be, um, my dildo's on a journey of its own. Um, but then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> anybody has seen it in any of the hotels and or random places that I have had it. It's like some poor person cleaned something and found my vibrator. Oh my is it gonna it's gonna do the like amelie where it's gonna like appear in different places around the world and like send you a postcard from oh, it that family <laughs> yes yeah i hope so i hope that i just see some randos like with my dildo like we're at the tower <laughs> pizza now look at us I'm like, you guys these are actually tweet. really great tweets you guys should be tweeting them out <laughs> oh yeah um <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but, but, but I'm looking at people's tweets. Oh, uh -huh. our tweets. Oh, I thought you meant the comments. Oh, yeah, I know. These are great tweets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just talking about you all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of mine are. Yeah. But you can, you know, that's you can't you can't equate voting to, for Biden to rape unless it's on my show. Um, all right. You guys, this has been so well, fucking fantastic. You know, it's I, been I feel like I killed it at the end, though, with my stupid Internet and stupid didn't plug my computer in. That's fine. Is was there something you really wanted to get a, like say a final thing or no? I just wanted to hear more from you guys. I was really having fun just hanging out. <laughs> so so was I. I am. I want you both back on the show, Atsuko. This is your second time, so uh, come back. Uh, third time is even more charming. And um, where can people find you, Atsuko? I'm just at Atsuko Comedy, and I post uh, what I'm up to there. So. Yes, and listen to Let's Go Atsuko, the podcast, right? Yes, yeah. Yay, okay. Uh, Atsuko, be well. Thank you so much. Liz, how can people follow your work and Abortion Access Front? Uh, you can follow me uh, on all the places at Liz Winstead, and I pretentiously spell my name with two Zs. Um, you can also, if you want, like, the, literally all the updates on what's happening in abortion, we have an incredible podcast with Abortion Access Front called The Feminist Sleeper Cell. Um, it's Moji, Ala Waddell, and Marie Khan, and they're just amazing, hilarious abortion advocates, and we all work together. So if you want, like, the weekly download that's hilarious and funny and smart, calls to action, do that. You can go to aaforce.org and find us there. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Liz. Be well. Thanks for all of your work. Love you. Uh, Love you too. Um, just so funny, so fierce. Like, honestly, do, can you ask for a better person? No, you can't. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for tipping the show. TBR dash live on Venmo, TBR live on Cash App. We're donating a portion to seed the vote, crushing it out there. Grassroots voter turnout, um, <laughs> singing everything. I need sleep. Uh, thank you so much to you all. Thank you to Becca Roofer, our producer. And remember, we got to vote. We got to vote for Biden. Uh, John Lewis took a bat to the head for our right to vote, for everyone's right to vote. So exercise it. Utilize democracy. Otherwise, someone else will, most likely a, a Russian. Um, 
And uh, we know who we're voting for because the alternative is saying things like this when asked a very pointed question. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, sir. I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right boys. White supremacists and right proud boys. Proud boys, stand back and stand by. But <laughs> stay locked and stay loaded. The man cannot condemn them because he is one. Don't just bitch about it. Be about it. See you next week. Bye.